Hello everyone and welcome to the Impact Play. We are your weekly source for the latest news, updates, discussions, and debates that bring us out beyond the just gaming. We're not only blurring the lines between gaming, entertainment, sports, and music. We're even amplifying those voices, having their stories told here on the Impact Play. Join us as we record the show live over at twitch.tv backslash the Impact Play by clicking on that no notification bell so you will be notified when we do go live or later on YouTube or even on your favorite podcast platform. Just simply search for The Impact Play. However you consume your content, wherever you consume it, we are there. Join us on Patreon or Silver Cruise and above. Get the show ad-free. Go to Cruise and above have exclusive access to not only the post show, but they can even call in and be a part of the live show experience as amongst other perks. Learn more at patreon.com backslash the impact play and and be a patreon supporter today if you haven't heard about anchor you're definitely missing out give it a try it's free and simple plus you've got nothing to lose you don't need the best equipment out there all you need is your phone and something to talk about there's even creation tools that allow you to not only record but also edit your podcast all within the app Whatever your passion is, Anchor is the surefire way to not only start your podcast, but also distribute it across a multitude of platforms, including Spotify, Google and Apple Podcasts, and so much more. Download the free Anchor app or simply go to anchor.fm to get started. I'm Ishros Mohammed, otherwise known as It's Yagu. This is episode 109. On the agenda, we have a brand new handheld, but from an unlikely source. Netflix is taking steps closer to bringing video games into onto its streaming platform. We have some Halo Infinite up updates for you. Nickelodeon is working on its own version of Super Smash Bros. Space Jam 2 A New Legacy leads the box office. The Suns were unable to get a win on, on home in Game 5. The WNBA is coming to Oakland. New music from... Ka a new music from Ka from Camila Cab Cabello, Blackpink's Lisa and Iggy Azalea will be taking a step back from her latest album release. And plus the top stories of the week. Welcome to our very first segment of the show, where we discuss what we have been playing, what we have been enjoying, and essentially what we have been up to. So if you guys have been paying attention to me on and on off stream, I've been playing. I'm still playing a whole bunch of Rocket League, especially with the latest uh, addition to the roster or skin, I should say, is Knight Rider, and I've and I've been having a blast with it ever since. From Back to the Future. I'm sorry, Knight Rider and Back to the, the Back to the Future skin. The summer road trip from Rocket League is really phenomenal. Like, like I've been on, like literally the only skin that I've missed was the formal from the sixth uh, anniversary event. Literally, it was just that one day and I forgot about it. But yeah, I've been having a blast with it. And uh, what I've been up to, I've I'm pretty much all, all caught up. I'm on the last episode of the Seven Deadly Sins season five. And it's available now over on Netflix. So if you haven't watched it, this latest season, be sure to do so. So I'm literally on my latest episode. I'll be able to f catch up with it today. And I'll talk more about it on the, on the post show. Uh, that's about it. I'm going to be watching Space Jam, a new Space Jam 2, A New Legacy later on today. And then when I, as soon as I come back, I'll, I won't, I'll give you guys a little bit of a glimpse of... Uh, spoiler free review over on the post show. Uh, yeah, that's about it. There's nothing else I've been up to late as of late. So, without further ado, we're gonna hop into the news. And first, we're gonna start with your gaming play. The, the number one for the day is Valve's Steam Deck. It's essentially a handheld. Let me show you guys. Hold on. What did I do? Okay, open up a new tab. Actually, for, forget that. Let's go to 
Steam. Oh my god, I'm talking about Valve. And not to be confused with Elgato Steam Deck. So for those of you who, for all you other listeners, uh, you are definitely missing out. So I would suggest coming back to the YouTube version of it later on, if you have, if you have time. Nope, it's not it. Uh, let's see. On that. There it is. It's available in three different models. A 64 gig with an EMMC drive with a carrying case, a 204 for 399, a 256 gigabyte with an NVMe SSD drive uh, for a 529 comes with fast storage, of course, carrying case and exclusive Steam community profile bundle. And as well as the 512 gigabyte with it, uh, and VME SSD drive, fast storage, premium anti glare etched glass, exclusive carrying case, exclusive Steam community profile bundle, and exclusive virtual keyboard theme. And expected uh, to come within quarter two or quarter three of this year. And they partnered with AMD to create a custom APU optimized for handheld gaming, a Zen 2 Plus. RDNA to powerhouse, delivering more than enough performance to run the latest AAA games in a very efficient power envelope. You, you have access to your, your stream library every, everywhere, control of comfort, and there's also a dock as well that you have access to connect your Steam Deck to external displays, wired, uh, wired networking, USB, USB prefer peripherals and power you can also use a powered USB-C hub if you have one laying around the official dock will be sold separately and more information will be available soon so let's see login for verification sign in oh they gotta send me an email I doubt I could be able to reserve it because a lot of people are having a lot of issues Uh, um, gotta hide this. I can enter the code if you don't mind. Okay, reserve now for five bucks. Purchase for myself. Oh, apparently, I can. That was funny. Because a lot of people were having issues trying to reserve this. Okay, hold on. Let me see if that's the right card information. You know what? Let me add another card just in case. For me personally, I wouldn't purchase this because... Like, mobile gaming doesn't do that much for me, especially for my PC library. I could easily play it on my, my, my PC, and I barely play my Switch as is. I think it's... So, literally the only way for me that I'm getting this is simply because for the show, because we're in the gaming industry, and that's about it. Yeah, it's been updated. Now I guess we'll try to buy it again. Purchase for myself. Oh, I have to agree. Mm. 
Yeah, there you go. Thank you for your purchase confirmation code. <laughs> there you go. Oh, that was funny. That's how easy it was. Uh, apparently. Because a lot of people are having issues, especially Greg from Kind of Funny. <laughs> it was funny. Well, look, literally in less than two minutes, <laughs> I was able to really reserve mine. Well, uh, that's about it, so I guess we'll go on to the next story of the, of the week. Halo Infinite has, uh, this is in regards to the multiplayer, this is coming from GameSpot by the way. More details about Halo Infinite multiplayer have emerged. As part of an employee spotlight feature, and lead multiplayer designer Andrew Witt, <clears throat> he revealed that Halo Infinite multiplayer will have a mark system. It sounds like a brand new feature for Halo. He also revealed that Halo Infinite's weapon tracks are inspired by Halo 2. In the interview, Witt described the mark system like this, a feature where players can mark a spot in the world that lets their teammates know their Vital, no vital information, like an enemy, enemy position or a weapon location. This sounds similar to the ping system from Rainbow Six Siege, Apex Legends, as well as other titles. For sure. Which also discussed another new element of Halo Infinite multiplayer. Spiners, the team at 343, designed this to help players understand where, where weapons and items will be on the map in an effort to make the game easier to understand and enjoy. If I'm playing multiplayer and I play it for the first time and I've never played a map, I don't know where weapons are spawning. We wanted to make it a better experience for players and we invested into what we call item spawners. Which said the item spawners are assets like weapon racks and equipment spawners. It's nothing new for Halo in terms of what players expect, but we wanted to call out where weapons spawn in the world. The weapons in Halo Influence map will spawn on weapons... Uh, racks inspired by Halo 2. We put the weapon racks on the walls because we wanted to develop a visual language around sc scavenging in the game so that players can make split second decisions around where to find a weapon. Which said, web knowledge is still an important skill to maintain, but we wanted to find a way to ease the burden of development of the uh, developing that knowledge by creating asset assets to drop. Uh, pop off the environment enough that you can make quick decisions on that on what item you want to f f uh, fight for next But yeah, nice new de details. I'm even more and more excited Now we're gonna go on to Netflix And it's coming from Venture B. Netflix hires Oculus and the EA veteran Mike Verdo To lead its fledging game efforts the company has been hiring game people for a while and Verdo is the biggest name yet to come on board at the steaming platform for movies and tv shows the move shows the company is serious about expanding into games which netflix ceo reed hastings once described pointing out fortnite in particular as netflix's biggest competition for the time of its customers verdu will be president of game development reporting to chief operating officer greg peters verdu was Facebook's vice president in charge of augmented reality and virtual reality content. He also served as senior vice president of EA Mobile, president of studios, and chief creative officer at Kabam, CEO of Tabzan, and chief creative officer and co-president of games at Zigna. Netflix has dabbed in, in games before titles like a Stranger Things game and the 3% challenge. The latter, the latter is a voice-controlled game in Black Mirror. But Banner Snatch is a game like experience as its interactive TV show in which audiences make choices that influence the end of the story. These were baby steps into a game, but Verdu is a serious game leader whose career has focused on building an entire portfolio of games for companies. So we'll see what if Netflix is actually serious of serious in of uh, taking a step in the gaming industry as compared to Google. So next, we'll go. We're going into this uh, Nickelodeon's All Star Brawl game has been announced. It's coming from ComicBook.com. Uh, 
and is scheduled for release in the fall of this year on the PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, Xbox Series consoles, Xbox One, and the Nintendo Switch. This uh, new Nintendo fighter comes from developers Laudacity Games and Fairplay Games, Fairplay Labs, and will be published by Game Mill Entertainment. The first trailer for the game that comes courtesy of IGN can be seen above the. So IGN has a trailer you can check out if you like. The graphics actually look good on it. So we're not gonna play the music for copyright purposes, but we're gonna show you the trailer nonetheless. They look really good, these graphics. But yeah, it looks interesting. I'm excited for it. But my understanding is hopefully it's coming to PC because it didn't uh, state that earlier. Reptar. It looks very similar. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure you can tell that it got inspiration from Super Smash Brothers, but then it made it its own. Okay, this actually looks interesting. I'm curious to see 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 how it goes. It doesn't say nothing about PC as you could see, but hopefully it does. All right, moving on. FIFA 2022 will be releasing October 1st, 2021, and that uh, what's uh, paint. I'm sorry, Paris Saint German striker Kalian Mbappe will be its cover star. Wow. Moving on, LeBron James is in Fortnite. As you can, uh, I'm pretty sure if you guys are into Fortnite, you already know about this. But yeah, this is, I was just reporting on it. So essentially, he has like three different versions of him, I guess you could say. One in his Toon Squad uniform. One in a Royale uniform, I guess you could say. Oh, so there's only two versions. Okay, there was three. Yeah, there is. Oh, so there is three. There's three versions of him. The second version has like two different color, uh, two different uh, color variations of it. Okay, I gotcha. All right, moving on. Just Cause Mobile has been delayed, and here is a tweet coming out from their official Twitter account. We're grateful to you, the JCM community, for all of the passion you've shown for Just Cause Mobile. As you're aware, the global COVID-19 pandemic has affected many studios, and unfortunately ours is no different. We've had to adjust to new ways of working, and that has resulted in delays to our development schedule. As a result, we've made the tough decision to delay the global launch of Just Cause Mobile until 2022. We know this news may be disappointing, but we hope you to you hope you to understand why this the decision has been made. 
We look forward to showing you more of the games as we get closer to launch. Until then, please continue following the Just Cause Mumble social media accounts and turn on notifications so you are among the first to see the uh, the updates. That's surprising. COVID-19 has affected a lot, especially in the games industry. Right? Murlock is teasing something on his Twitch channel. There's something going on on Murlock Entertainment's Twitch channel. It's going from IGN. The developer seems to be broadcasting a map of the Mediterranean Sea, shown from high above and stylized in a way that gives off early 20th century vibes. There is one franchise in the studio's history that definitely aligns with this most closely. But just to be thorough, let's explore all the possibilities. So it's probably they're saying it's there's speculation that it's probably Company of Heroes two. Uh, World War two. Italian theater of World War two, but yeah, literally just speculation. But there is something uh, cooking over there. Unopened copy of Super Mario 64 sells for 1.56 million at an auction set that has set a new world record. Thank you for Bleacher Report for that new story. So there is an unlikely partnership, 100 Thieves, that esports are. Um, Organization has teamed up with Gucci for a new merch drop coming out tomorrow as of this recording. So I'm definitely excited for them. Uh, let's see. Next, I had an experience earlier, maybe this week, if I'm not mistaken, where I, ex I got the black screen of death for the Xbox One console. And then now I waited like maybe a day or two because the only thing I was able to see was the if you guys have been paying attention to the live playthroughs where i was only able to hold down the x button where it shows you turn off console or restart uh, console or turn off controller that's the only thing that popped up so i know that is nothing visual related so it was an update uh, for xbox insiders that calls uh that issue so the fix for it is there's a way to reset your console uh let me see if i have that here somewhere if you guys are, are have experienced it or experiencing and you have uh, no idea about a fix, I'm here for you. Let me see. Here. I know I took a screenshot, but give me a second. Oh, no, I didn't. Okay, that means it's other... My Twitter profile somewhere. I'll find it. Oh, it's not here. Uh, bookmarks. It's not here either. It's super weird. And let me try to find it in the meantime. Bear with me just a little bit longer, folks. There's a way to reset the console, but I'm trying to figure it out. Oh, 
Oh, here it is. Okay. So when you do face it, uh, turn off the console for 30 seconds and then hold down the X button as well as the console's. Oh, hold on, hold on, let me see something. Oh, as well as the eject. So hold on. Okay. So you turn it back on and then you press the eject and then the connect uh, button on the side for simultaneously until you hear two beeps and then it'll come a window will, will come up where it'll say reset reset console but to keep your uh, current um, files on the system but yeah so let me know if that works for you if not I'll get further clarification for you guys but yeah Oh, here it is. I found it. Okay. So unplug the Xbox completely. Wait about 30 seconds. Uh, plug it back up. And then press... Pl plug it back up. Press the power button. Then hold the eject and sync buttons to get the troubleshooting screen. So I found it. I know I had to save it somewhere. But here it is. Okay... So our Persona's 25th anniversary, a special website has launched, plus seven new projects have been teased. Okay. So let's see. So apparently we're getting new merch as well. Emblems, trading cards. So one of the seven projects will uh, potentially be Codename X, a previously teased mobile game inspired by Persona 5. And, we'll, and the project essentially will, will, will be set in motion this September. So expect more details by then. Battlefield 2042 will feature crossplay, although not all platforms will be able to play with all others. This is coming from IGN. Crossplay has been confirmed in a new Battlefield briefing by EA had uh, made clear that there will be two poles of players rather than one single mixed group. PC, Xbox Series, consoles, PlayStation 5 uh, can opt out of crossplay. So that's one pool and the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 is another. So... Uh, the reviews are in for The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD. GameSpot gave it a 7 out of 10. Guardian, a 4 out of 5. The Verge says the port is, is improved on all of the ex expected uh, ways. It runs smooth. The graphics look clean despite a... And the new control scheme makes it a more accessible version of Skyward Sword. There are, e there are even some nice little tweaks, like a slightly less chatty talking sword that serves as your guide. But yeah, Game Informer 8 out of 10, Video Games Chronicle 5 out of 10. But yeah, a lot of reviews are, a lot of uh, re games reviews are saying that the game is great. Moving on, God of War's Cradle. Kratos' voice actor will play Black Panther in Marvel's Avengers. And thank you, Jane, for this article. Christopher Judge, the voice actor of God of War's Kratos, will be leading his voice, will be lending his voice to King T'Challa, Black Panther, and Marvel's Avengers when the War for Wakanda expansion launches later this year. Alright, NBA 2K22 is coming in September with... Don Keek, Durant, Dirk, and Kareem on the covers. So, Don Keek, a two time NBA All Star, and his three seasons in the league will grace the cover of NBA 2K22 Standard Edition and Cross Generation Digital Bundle. The background of the Standard Edition features artwork 
of a shouting Don Keek uh, draped in thick breaststrokes of blue, white, and red, a nod of the flag of his native country, Sol- Solvania. 2K Sports is continuing its policy of charging dollars extra for its for its game on current generation consoles. Da, 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 da. We know about that. A third version of NBA 2K22 is a history-making one. 2K Sports is marking its milestone year for the WNBA with the WNBA 25th anniversary special edition of NBA 2K22. Its cover will feature Candace Parker of the Chicago Sky, the first woman cover athlete in NBA 2K history. So it will be sold exclusively at Xbox, I'm sorry, at GameStop and EB Games. I'm definitely going to be getting my hands on that edition as well. Nidia's Prime Warframe has been revealed at Tenocon 2021. Uh, they also, we also got a solid of 30 minutes of gameplay, giving players a taste of what's yet to come. Well, that's essentially it, but it looks good. Let me show you guys what I'm looking at. There you go. It looks really good. And I've played Warframe in forever, too. It was just so too confusing to play. Speaking of Warframe, it is getting cross play and cross save. There's no specific date, apparently. Okay. So, there is a tease that has been announced earlier today from Ubisoft on their official Twitter account. That's saying that there will be a brand new game in the Tom Clancy universe. That will be re- uh, revealed on July 19th at 11 a.m. Pacific or 12, 2 p.m. No, 2 p.m. Uh, Eastern. Right? Hold on, let me see. Let me correct that. Right? It's 2 p.m.? Yeah, 2 p.m. I was right. <laughs> so I'm excited for what's to come. All right, so we're going to move moving on to the, your entertainment play. And we're going to start with Space Jam and New Legacy. Steals the ball away from Black Widow with $31 million and more for the best for her family during an epidemic. So uh, let's see, this is going from Deadline, by the way. And as of now... It is the number one in the box office as well. That, that's an update. So for the weekend, uh, it grossed a total of $31.65 million. Black Widow, total $26.25 million. Escape Room, Tournament of Champions, $8.8 million. Fast 9. Uh... Here it is, uh, seven point six million. Boss Baby Two Family Business four point seven million. Uh, Forever Purge four point sixteen million. A Quiet Place Part Two two point three million. Roadrunner one point nine. Cruella one point one, and Pig three hundred forty six. I'm sorry, three hundred forty five thousand. So. Literally, LeBron James tweeted tweeted this earlier. Let me show you guys what I'm lo- looking at. Huh. 
Hi, haters. <laughs> with the source, with the article from Deadline that I referenced earlier. Yeah, everybody, literally all the reviews, and it's really saying that the that the movie was not nothing compared to the original. It was horrible. Da 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 da. da and people were comp uh, complaining about Lola Bunny's outfit and so on. And look, it beat the box office completely. So everybody, and literally those same news sites that reported on this. Reported about uh, that they that that they're number one in the box office, like literally, like you, as you you guys can imagine the um, hypocrisy, I should say. All right, moving on. Kevin Feige and Spider Man and Venom crossover in the MCU. I wouldn't roll anything out because nothing is essentially rolled out. So we might see some sort of uh, version of crossover between Venom and the MCU. And speaking of the MCU, Deadpool has officially joined the MCU in the most dead way possible. Ever okay. So uh, let's see. So essentially, it's a. I'm not gonna play the video because copyright. But yeah, there is a video on YouTube. It's called Deadpool and Korg React. You can watch that later if you like. So I'm definitely excited for that. And speaking of uh, MCU. Apparently, Spider-Man's No Way Home suit uh, has kind of been leaked via a toy release. Literally, all these toy releases, especially the same thing with Halo Infinite, where where uh, people got a look of the new armor as well. I'm not going to show this for spoilers, of course, but yeah, there's a toy that's coming out from Hot Toys. But yeah, that's, that's as much as I'm going to get into it. Starting on August 13th, be prepared to shout out an extra buck if you sus if you are subscribing to ESPN Plus because the Disney-owned streaming service is raising its prices from $5.99 to $6.99 per month. Uh, let's see. So yeah, that's essentially it. <laughs> Uh, the price is going up a little bit. So, uh, Misha Green has found a new home with Apple TV+. Plus. The news comes from one week after HBO canceled Green's drama series, Lovecraft Country, according to Yahoo. So, yeah. Expect some new stuff coming out to Apple TV. They're literally on par. Mm. And this is another one from Deadline as well. Vince, Vince G Galligan inks a new four-year overall deal with Sony Pictures and uh, Television. One of the longest ongoing creative partnerships between a showrunner and a studio is set to continue. Uh, Vince Galligan, creator of the blockbuster Breaking Bad franchise, which has spawned two hit series and a movie, and has re-upped his overall deal with Breaking Bad producer Sony Pictures Television. And literally will bring his tenure to almost two decades. So yeah, strike some more Sony in the entertainment uh, space. So uh, for, uh, we'll move on to the next one coming from DC's official Twitter account. DC is heartbroken to hear of the of the passing of Robson R Rocha, as tributes pour in from her his friends and fans were reminded that he was not only an extraordinary artist but also a beloved member of the comic book community and the DC family. So may he rest in peace.
Okay, this next one's coming from Variety. Archwell Productions, the Netflix-based single launched by Prince Harry and Meghan Markle is getting into the animated business. Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex, is the creator behind Pearl, described as a family series that centers on the adventures of a 12-year-old girl who was inspired by a variety of an influential woman from history. Created as... I'm sorry, credited as the Duchess of Sussex in the release, Markle will executive produce Pearl with David Fordish, Caroline Soper, Liz Garbus, uh, and Dan Cogan. Amanda Rada has been tapped as showrunner and executive producer. Logie director... Oh, I thought I read that wrong. Loki director Kate Heron won't be back for season two. Has revealed. Because it was uh, officially speculated, speculated that Loki won't get a season two. And that she was only on for one season. So hopefully she'll be back later on. Well, yeah. Last but not least, we're going to end this with Ruben Rose reveals the truth is leaving is uh, leaving her her role as Batwoman of the CW's Batwoman to be more precise. Uh, it has been thought to have been due to injuries sustained during filming, or maybe the long hours. Da, 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 people are speculating. She was allergic to the costume. She's allergic to the latex. But yeah, sadly. All right. Moving on to your sports play. Bucks has won a back-to-back -back game for both Game 4 and Game 5 and take the lead 3-2. to two. And I was watching the game last night. The game was actually was amazing it could have gone any other way because the game was so close uh so apparently it was hold on let me see game six game five oh 123 to 119 so it could have gone like any other way i would have have guessed which way it was going but the game was like amazing to watch it was phenomenal and speaking of the of uh the suns David Buck has scored the most point uh, has scored the most points in his first career postseason with 522 points and counting. So congratulations for making history. So Nigeria apparently uh, wins over the USA in, in an exhibition match of the basketball team. England takes takes over Italy for to uh, be the champions of the Euro 2021 over penalties. The Washington football team will announce a new name, a new logo in 2022. Thank you, Reuters, for that article. Jake Paul is apparently taking on his next opponent, Tyreen. Uh, Woodley will be held in Cleveland, Ohio on August 29th. So thank you ESPN for that tweet. So congratulations to Emma Rodocano for winning the OPPO, the championships the uh, yeah okay now moving on Olympic track star Allison Fel 
Felix launches a $200,000 child care fund to support athletes competing in 2021. So, kudos to her. Thank you, Bleacher Report, for that tweet. So apparently the Yankees' first half grade isn't pretty, according to ESPN. They gave them a D plus. Literally, their performance has been horrible. They're 0 to 6 against the Red Sox. They're literally in third place. We're Red Sox in first. The, J the Rays in second, the Blue Jays in third, and the Yankees in, in uh, with a D plus. So one, two, three, yeah, fourth. So hopefully they improve soon. They can't afford to get cocky now. So here's some even breaking news. Canada has given the Blue Jays an exemption to on border restrictions that will allow them to, that will allow them to play in Toronto on July 30th. Thank you, sports, uh, sports Report, for that. And last, we're going to end this sports play with WNBA coming to Oakland with a new team. And this is amazing news, not just for Oakland, but for the WNBA as a whole. Because all this amplifies them even further, especially uh, with their 25th anniversary as well. Okay. Now we're gonna end. It, uh, now we're gonna go to your music play. And we're gonna continue with this Britney Spears and her ongoing conserve conservatorship uh, battle. So apparently she's still trying to fight it. And apparently she stated that her support system, uh, meaning her father, is killing her dreams. But there are a lot of people in support of her as well. So this year, the American Music Awards show is looking at some big changes behind the scenes. As ABC and Dick... Clark uh, Productions are announcing that Jess Collins recently of the Grammys and uh, Oscars is taking over as showrunner and an executive produ producer, starting with the telecast set for November 21st of this year. Thank you, Variety, for that article. Usher launches lo his Las Vegas re residency. I don't want to close the curtain. So his residency continues from July 17th through August 14th. The Backstreet Boys will return to Las Vegas for the first ever holiday show. All right, moving on. This week, Telemundo and Billboard unveiled the official date and venue of the 2021 Billboard Latin Music Awards to take place Thursday, September 23rd at the Watsco Center in Corel, Gabal, Florida. All right. And now we're going to go on to Tanashi announces a 2021 date for her 3-3-3 tour with Ray Ami. It's coming from her official Twitter, her official Instagram account as well.
and I'll copy and paste the link in chat as well. So apparently it's going to start from September 16th in Houston and it's going to end October 21st, 24th. Uh, I'm assuming it's going to be virtual and October 21st is going to be in Seattle. Okay, Camila Caballo shares her uh, a don't go yet teaser. It will be... It'll be out July 23rd. Normani announces a new single, a new single with Cardi B. Titled Wild Side and is out now. Blackpink's Lisa will release her solo music for the first time this summer. Bulber confirms the K-pop Girl groups South Korean label YG Entertainment reportedly shared the news of Lisa's solo debut in a statement. According to Sompi, Lisa will film the music video for her new song this week, YG, said her per her outlet. She'll be making her solo debut this summer. And last but not least, Iggy Azalea is will be taking a step back after her latest album release. I am the strip club. That's the title. No, hold on. Oh, no, no, okay. Just making sure. Uh, okay. Now, the new album is, is expected in August. will mark her third studio album and her first new full length since In My Defense in, tw in July of 2019. So, we're going to move on to Reader Mail. If you want to send us Reader Mail, here's how. Want to know your feedback, your thoughts, if any questions you may have for sending us Reader Mail on our Discord server, leaving a voice note over at anchor.fm backslash the impact play, or even by sending us an email to readermail at the Who knows, we may even be featured on a future episode, or even a special Reader Mail segment of the show. So thank you guys so much for making the Impact Play a part of your day. If you wish to join our community server over on Discord, short time enter exclamation Discord in chat now. And guys, we're trying to unlock subs. And literally over on Twitch, and we need your help. Literally all we need are the views. Share the channel with your friends and family. Like literally anyone, help us grow, grow the podcast to new heights that we, where we know we can take this. And expect even more content, expect even more get, uh interviews even more guest appearances from from the from uh, game development to artists to writers and so on so leave us a review if you just already got a favorite platform thank you guys so much have a great one and until next time <laughs>